Hi everybody, Paul Gallagher here. Um, what I want to do with this short video today is take a look at processing woodland photographs, or what is more often the case is controlling the contrast in woodland photographs. And this, this particular picture is a good example. Okay, it looks nothing like when I was stood there at all, nothing like it at all. When I was stood there, the light was coming through the canopy of the trees. It was flooding all the woodland floor. It was very warm. Um, it was a spectacular place to be on that day. But if we look at the histogram now, begin by looking at the histogram, we can see that the histogram is bunched to the left. And that was the only way on this particular day I could m make this ex particular exposure because I didn't want to blow the highlights in this branch with the leaves pointing towards the sunlight. There was no filter I could apply to the, to the camera and the lens of that particular day, because there's no filter that just shields the highlight areas of a branch. So the only way for me to achieve an exposure, a histogram that I could use when I come back was to expose to the left. But as I mentioned, it looks nothing like it was there. And so what I want to explore is how I get back that light in the woodland, okay. So let's begin with the histogram. We look over here, we put both of these little warning, clipping warnings on there, and that one's switched on there. Make sure they're switched on. Let's look at the histogram. First and foremost, let's check that all our tonality's in. We're gonna come down to the, uh, the white slider and the black slider down here, okay? I'm gonna alt click on the whites. I'm gonna, now the screen will go black and we can see a few tiny white dots. That means that in the main, everything's in. The highlights are in. Okay, we're gonna do the same with the blacks. So we're gonna come down to the black slider, hold down the Alt key and left click. Now what we can see is the screen or the image area goes white and we can see some areas of yellow. That doesn't mean that um, the blacks are completely solidly blocked up. What it means is that the yellow channel is performing at its max. If we had problems, we'd be seeing something like this. Where we'd actually see blacks on that particular screen. But we haven't got that issue to worry about. So let's return all of the sliders back to where they are. Now let's assess what we're going to do. We're going to start with exposure, okay? Now this is different from exposure in the field. Exposure in the field would have certainly blown the highlights. Exposure here will try and move in the main one segment of the histogram. So if I slide my cursor upwards towards the histogram, as we go further up, we'll see a gray area of the histogram appear from where the slider is. And we'll also see the word exposure appear. If I press the button there, we can see the gray band just there, okay. Now, when I move exposure now, it will try and move that gray band the most and leave the outside, the, the shadows there and the highlights to the right as much as it can, it will leave them in situ. So I'm gonna slowly but surely slide the histogram to the right and try and reintroduce some of the light into the image. Now all the time I'm doing this, I'm making sure that the highlights don't go too bright, okay? So we'll leave it there for now. Straight away, I'm gonna go back and check me whites, check I've done no damage. Alt, click on the whites, and we can see there's still a few dots. So we're quite safe. So what we've managed to do is achieve quite a bit of light in the photograph, but without blowing the highlights. Okay, now next, obviously is the shadows. The trees are very, very dark. As I mentioned, there was the, the, the woodland was full of light. So let's introduce some of the, uh, the shadow detail, a little bit more light into the shadows. We'll come across and we'll keep on going across. Okay, that's great. Now, the highlights on these on this branch that's facing the sky, they're so pale, there's hardly any color in them. So that's the reason why I want to bring down the highlights in the image. I'm going to get over the highlight slider there and slide it to the left slowly but surely. When you're doing this, don't look at the values over here. Don't be concerned about these values. Look at the photograph. We know that the blacks and whites are quite safe, so look at the photograph and bring the highlight down. Okay, now gradually we're building the image up. We're starting to get the essence of woodland and the light bouncing around all of the woodland. Now the next thing, which is quite common with digital cameras, anyone's been out and come back, um, is that from a woodland photograph, is that the greens in an image are normally quite blue green. It's just one of the properties of digital cameras and sensors. And so really, this was the beginning of autumn, but the image really looks quite green and it wasn't like that in reality. So 
just as a first port of call to try and remedy that, I'm going to push the exposure, not the exposure, you should say the, the temperature to the right slightly and just warm things up. But don't go too far at this stage. Let's just push it across a little bit. Right, so we're starting to get that autumn feel about it. We've adjusted the temperature. We've brought the exposure across to tease out all the values or all, all, sort of brighten the whole thing up. Shadows out, highlights back a little bit. I still think the colours need more help. So to do that, I'm going to go across to here, which is hue, saturation and luminance adjustment. So if I just do that, it's the little sort of, it's the right of the two triangles. I'm going to click on that. It brings up a dialog box. Now, as you'd expect, there'd be three tabs, hue, saturation and luminance. I'm going to just be using hue at this moment in time. And what this does is it gives you a set of individual colour channel sliders and it enables you to effectively alter the hue of that particular colour. So if we exaggerate this, we go to yellows and push them to the right. You can see they go very, very green. OK, and you can see the colour indication on the slider itself. Double click to get it back to where it was. What I'm going to do is I'm going to warm the yellows up because some of the yellows were actually turning quite autumnal. And that's not really represented here at this moment in time. So I'm going to slide the slider to the left slightly and it will just warm up and reintroduce some of the warmth in the yellows. And we can see it certainly on the floor, here, on the woodland floor here. These look like autumnal coloured leaves that have fallen. I'm going to return the attention now to the greens. And once again, we go to the left of the greens, they become a warmer tone of green. And hopefully it will get rid of some of the kind of blue cast that we're seeing in the grasses at the base of the image. So I'm going to get the greens, I'm going to slide them slowly to the left. Right, that's done well. That's about right for me. I think that it's, it's warmed the greens up and it's brought some of the autumnal colours back to the yellows and the leaves that are turning. I'm finished with that for now. I'm going to go back to the basics tab. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is we need, I still think it's too contrasty. Okay, we, we still need a little bit of um, of calmness to the image, a little bit of, of what it was like. You know, it wasn't quite that contrasty. So I'm going to deploy the use of two sliders, clarity and dehaze. Okay, now clarity, I'm going to use negative clarity. Now what is often the case is in woodland scenes, people push clarity too far. Okay, you tend to get something like this, which looks dreadful. It looks like somebody spilt a cup of tea on the print. Don't push your clarity too far. It, that lowers mid-tone contrast. Just nudge your clarity down a little bit, maybe four or five or six points. That's all you'll need to bring the shadows out to soften it down more. This is where negative dehaze will come into its own. I'm going to click on negative dehaze, and as I slide it to the left, you'll see the densities of the blacks soften up. And as I do that, now we start to get that softness of this diffused light in the woodland. And for me now, that's almost back to what, to what, to what it looked like when I was there. And we've done no localised adjustments. It's important. Always exhaust what you can do in the basics tab first before you dive in and start altering shadows at the backs of trees or altering highlights here. But it's a really good starting point for woodland. And if we come down to the very bottom, this is Adobe Camera Raw, by the way, we come down to the very bottom here and look, there's, um, there's, there's, there's the middle box, there's a left arrow and a right arrow in, within a box. If we left click that, now we can see where we began, which is colder, bluer, very harsh contrast, but a good histogram. And we click on that again and we've got that light in the woodland that I wanted and, and the, the very thing I photographed on the day. Okay. Go to your files. I'm sure everyone's got woodland files there. Try this technique and the very best of luck and hopefully we'll see you soon.